Stefan? He's, he's excused. excused. Ben Akron? He's excused. Vanderweel? Here. Wangerman? Excused. Warner? Here. 13 present. We have present. a quorum. I need a motion for approval of the June 7th meeting. So moved. Second. Motion was made and seconded to approve the minutes of the June 7th meeting. Any, anybody got any questions on the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Contrary? Carried. All right, we got two items on the agenda tonight. We have the building use committee's choice of the police station, and then we have a Mr. Don Richards on the Patriot Act. The first one will be on the building use committee choice of the police station. We have uh, the chairman, Michael Warner, here. He can do it. Some explaining to you if you have it, if the council or the uh, committee whole has any questions for either Mike or Deputy Chief Weiss, just ask him. And then we'll ask for a motion to uh, either pass or turn down the site, and then we will pass it on to the city planning. Okay, city planning, they said they had to go first. Okay, go ahead. If you want to do that. I thank you, Alderman Berg. Yeah, it, it is on our agenda tonight on council, and that will get referred to the plan commission autom automatically, unless the council would decide otherwise uh, that they wanted to pass it tonight. I suppose we could do that, but it, it, that would probably be problematic in that the plan commission by state statutes has to review it prior to any decision by the council. So. That's how it works. It goes to Plan Commission, which meets, I believe, next week, Tuesday, Mayor. Okay. And uh, after that, it comes back to Common Council. So should the Plan Commission send it back to the Common Council with that? It could be changed. It could be anything like that. So that is actually the process. But on that, uh, what, what we're trying to do tonight is provide a little information to the Council on how we got to this point and from the past uh, couple of years that we've been working on this. And as you are all aware, the Building Use Committee of your Common Council has taken another step in the process to build a new police station. In tonight's Common Council documents, number 743 is a report of committee with an attached resolution that is being referred to the Plan Commission. This referral is part of the process of checks and balances and is required by state statutes. I'd like to provide a brief history on what has taken place over the last three to four years regarding the need for a new police station. Mayor Schramm, number one, has made it clear that a new police station is on the top of his list of priorities for the city. And without the mayor's support and guidance, we would not be at this stage in the process of building a new police station. Almost four years ago, your building use committee became more active and started the long process to reach the goal of building a new police station. The committee and city staff have spent countless hours to keep the process moving forward and we have more work to do. We had to assemble first the basic needs, building space, locations, personnel needs and other city department needs because this impacts City Hall also. We had to put together a list of possible sites for the police station's location and also for City Hall's location. We had to have a comprehensive, we, we didn't have to, but we did issue a comprehensive study that would determine the space needs, consider and evaluate sites, look at future city and department needs. The study was completed on June 28th of 2002. We then evaluated the study results in the process, and our goal in that was to make a recommendation to the council. In the interim, after the study came out, and it had the top sites picked, the Chamber of Commerce also paid $7,500 to do another study to determine the feasibility of locating a new police station at the County Law Enforcement Center. At this time, the next step after the Council determines a site is the building design for the selected site. At this juncture, there's only been a basic and preliminary footprint done for each of the five final sites considered in the study. After building design will be the funding process. 
We are looking at 2005 through 2006 for bonding. Once financing is set, construction would begin. We expect that would be in 2006, with preliminary groundwork started in 2005. It should be noted there is just over $2 million in the police building fund. Design is expected to be somewhere around three quarters of a million, and we don't have a solid number on that yet because the RFPs have not gone out. Uh, that leaves somewhere around one and a quarter million. That would be enough to start the preliminary groundwork in 2005 for construction in 2006. And that's a very basic timeline, timeline, and of course it is not carved in stone. By moving this project forward in steps, it allows delays in such a way that the project does not die. It just slows down while valid and critical questions are answered. We saw that happen several times throughout the course of the past two years since the study was completed. When the consultant had completed its report in 2002, some were concerned with the results. As I mentioned, the Chamber of Commerce, on input from its members, wanted us to hold off while they paid for a study on location at the current law enforcement center. That took several months to complete and it was found to be unfeasible. The next major issue to arise came about because the committee approached the county regarding the road to the south of the current highway department building on North 23rd Street. The committee and the consultant knew that things would be tight on the Imperial Motel site because of its size and thought perhaps the county would be willing to give us the road on the south side of their building to enhance the size of the Imperial Motel site. This site, the Imperial site, was the number two recommendation of the consultant and of the survey of the police and city hall employees. That contact with the county led to almost an entire year of discussions and subsequent studies brought on by the county's request that we consider the property to the north of their 23rd Street Highway Department. First, there were several meetings and preliminary discussions with the county. Then the city had a phase one environmental site assessment and preliminary subsurface investigation and soil sampling done on the county site to the north of their highway building. This was done because the county had used the site as a dump and had leached contaminants into the soil in that area and we did have some concerns. Land is very unstable and would require a floating slab. A multi-story building is not recommended and there are additional building costs associated with the northern site. We also had a phase one environmental site assessment done on the Imperial site and there were no concerns with that site. After working closely with the county, we did come to agreement on what the terms would be should the committee's recommendation be to build on it and should this council decide that that's where they would like to build. That brings us to the number one choice of the consultant and of the employees in the survey, Sheridan Park. From the first time we considered Sheridan Park as a potential site over three years ago, th th through the professional study and up to June 18th of this year, we were unsure as to whether or not the park site could be used as a location. It was always on our minds and always in our discussions because of the many benefits the site presents. Just prior to the building use meeting of June 23rd, Claire Silverman, legal counsel for the League of Wisconsin Mis Municipalities, rendered her opinion. In answer to the question as to whether the city may use the park for a police station, there being no legal restrictions, Ms. Silverman states, in the absence of such restrictions, it is my opinion that the Common Council may use the park property for a new police department. The designation as a park or public square on the plat and in the map contained in the county atlas do not operate by themselves to restrict the use of the property. What that says is that the Common Council, in designating a park, can also designate it for other uses. This opinion was an important factor in formulating the committee's recommendation. We have worked long and hard to cover all of the issues involved. We are thankful to the county for working with us to provide an option for the 23rd Street site, should that be our choice. The Building Use Committee is making the recommendation to build a new police station at Sheridan Park, and that was a unanimous committee decision. We believe it is in the best interest of the city of Sheboygan taxpayers, the neighborhood, the businesses located there, the police department, and the future of the entire city of Sheboygan. Should the plan commission approve the building use committee's decision, the common council will be able to address this step of the process at our July 19th meeting. 
If you have any questions that the Building Use Committee and st staff can answer, we, we would be glad to answer them. If we cannot provide you with the answer tonight, we will get it to you by the time we discuss this at the next meeting. Again, on behalf of the Building Use Committee, I thank you for your patience and your time. Also, in your documents, council documents tonight, document number 747, is a letter I sent to Chairman Gehring, and I'd like you just to read that. It, I believe it reiterates uh, that we really appreciated working with the county, and uh, just because the committee doesn't, uh, isn't making that site as their number one recommendation doesn't mean we don't appreciate the time they spent trying to work this out with, with us. So we feel Sheridan Park is a better site. But on that, any questions? Any questions of the billing use committee or deputy? Any questions from the billing, billing uh, use or deputy chief Weiss? I think we have all the person Monta Mayor. Ah, thank you very much. Um, just as review, could you tell me the five original tentative places? Number one, you said was Sheridan Park. Number two was Imperial Motel. Mm -hmm. What were three, four, and five? I am going right there. I know it's right here someplace. We had. We had five sites that made it in the muster. We looked at over 20 sites. Uh, you name it, we looked at it all over town. We did look at the armory. We looked at the Century Building. That building is worth over $7 million. That's what the cost of the police station is. I don't think we want to buy that to put a police station in and spend that much. Uh, we looked at the Rice Building, uh, just numerous sites around the city. The sites that after going through the process of looking at all these with the consultant and staff and the committee, it was narrowed down to five sites. There was a North Central site. The North Central site, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Dan or Bob, was uh, an area north of Erie Avenue between 10th and 11th Street. And what happens in those instances, you have to first acquire all the homes in an instance like that. Then you have to pay the costs uh, for legal fees and relocations costs. And in an instance like this, that could easily add $2 million to the $12.6 million estimate for construction on that site. That was one site, north central in the city. Then we had two sites that were west central. The number one site, which was referred to as site 2A because at the time it was felt it wasn't proper. The first site, uh, that, that one at the time was not designated as where it was either. It was just called that North Central site. The second two sites, site 2A and site 2B, were designated the same way so as not to cause controversy out there and scare the residents or speculators or any other instance like that. But the West Central site, site 2A, that was Sheridan Park. Okay? Okay, so Sheridan Park wasn't number one, it was 2A? No, these are the, that's just the list that they were in. Okay. 2A was... I understand. Not number one right. as, as the one it was picked, but I just, understand. that was right. the second one. And then we had site 2B, which was the West Central, which would be a block to the north of Sheridan Park, which again would require, it had the same drop of about 14 feet from 13th to fort, or 14th to 13th Street. Uh, but in that site, in 2B, you would again have to acquire the homes, pay re relocation and legal fees. And that again can amount to close to $2 million is what we figured on something like that. Then we had site 3. That is the city's former drop-off site, the Greif Brothers building. Uh, the problem with that is, is problematic uh, due to flooding and experience in the past and all these types of issues and was very, it came out the last site on the, on the consultant's uh, line of uh, sites that we picked. Then it was site four, which was the Imperial Motel property. And uh, so we had 2A and 2B, mm -hmm. which get us to, five sites. Uh, thank you, Alderman. I, I've written these down, and sure enough, it adds up to five places. Great. Thank you. And I, and I would reiterate, I mean, we looked at the Marshall Building, uh, every place you could think. North of, uh, of uh, the old St. Nick's, that intersection between 9th and 10th, north of Superior. We looked at uh, the block to the north of Erie Avenue between 12th and 13th. We considered uh, the block north of Superior Avenue on 17th Street along the railroad tracks. Uh, 
every site we even considered Moose Park was in the early running. Uh, a lot of sites. So just about every site you read about that someone has an idea on has been looked at. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Judging from the communications from the county, uh, which I've had an opportunity to review very briefly, I, I get a sense that there's a flavor of finality in the communication in that perhaps the county, in, in their mind, feels that there was a, a contract uh, constructed uh, because of all these negotiations that were being, were being held. Uh, the language uh, is a little bit stronger than just simply exploring options. The language uh, is stronger in the sense that it almost uh, connotes a, the formation of a contract, a meeting of the mind, so to speak. Uh, and, and that concerns me because two years later, uh, as Alderman Warner has pointed out, uh, this is the first time that this council gets to look at, at it and perhaps even ask questions about it. Uh, one question is begging oh, to be... Alderman Perez, could I interrupt you? Two years later, the county and the city just got done discussing this just at the end of this March. So it's not been two years since we've talked to the county. It's been... How long has it been since the couple negotiations? A couple of months? Yeah. With the county, we've been talking for just about a year. That, okay. I thought you, I but thought it's you been two years two. since the study was done. So it took okay. two years to get from the study to this point. Okay. Did, did the city council... I know the building use committee as a committee has the right to to meet and talk and discuss. Mm -hmm. But it seems that that committee went a step further and almost establishing contractual uh, stipulations uh, mm -hmm. at which, uh, I, and I get the feeling that the county is not very happy with it. Uh, so that was my question. Did, yeah. did the council authorize the building use committee and if so, at what point to actually... The council did authorize the building use committee to look into sites. Anything that would have came from the from any discussions between the building use committee, which is only three older persons, and the, and the county would come to the council. And that's why you have the details of the document there. Uh, and I'd be glad to provide you with the full details of costs on that site and everything if you like it, sure. I, I, but I, yes, we did not sign okay. a contract or anything. We came to terms, if we were to buy that site, from them, if we were to give them by the site from the county, what the terms would be and what the committee would feel comfortable if they would recommend it to the council. Yes, uh, did it get beyond that? No, three older persons can't. Anything the building use committee does has to come back to this common council for approval, so we can't make a contract with anybody. So. Well, I agree with you. That's why I'm making the point that I'm making is that the uh, communication seems to state that the three aldermen uh, being Alderman Wagam and yourself and another one that I can't recall were um, Me. in the process of Alderman Berg of <laughs> negotiating a contract. So that's a little stronger language than just simply exploring options. It was which, negotiating terms. Which, if I may, uh, always tends to put this body at a disadvantage because we were almost put up, up against the wall, and, and that makes me uncomfortable. The the other point that I, that I wanted to make is that Sheridan Park isn't going anywhere. It belongs to us, and there's one of the first plotted parks that, that we have. I guess I don't understand the hurry uh, to approve. Uh, I don't agree with it being uh, referred to city planning, because city planning has the authority, I believe, to make a decision without the council approving afterwards. Not a, no, unless they don't. They, what the City Plan Commission, by state statute, it has the, the decision of the Building Use Committee has to be referred to City Plan. They, by state statutes, and the City Plan Commission cannot decide that that's the site without the council's approval. Okay. And along and along with these discussions, I think it would have been very appropriate uh, for the council and for the public to understand how exactly is this police station going to be funded. I think citizens need to understand that so that they can grasp the picture in whole and understand what their obligation is going to be uh, tax-wise or whatever-wise it will be. So I'm always in favor of uh, community input sessions. Uh, sometimes you have them and people don't show up. I think that's great because they're telling you it's okay to do it. Go ahead. But sometimes they do come up and 
give you some incredible insight into how they were thinking. Uh, so I'm a great believer in community input, and mm -hmm. I don't think that we've allowed ourselves to to provide that opportunity for the public to and, to give and, us a little piece of their mind, so to speak. And I would disagree with Alderman Perez on that, in that. Uh, as I say, we've been doing this for close to four years. We have numerous communications from people that were called into building use to uh, talk about the site that they thought was the most important. Uh, except for the times when we would discuss uh, our negotiations with the county to come to terms that we could agree with the building use committee <coughs> was open to those. And all those communications have come through the committee. Uh, as I say, again, this is a recommendation from the building use. And uh, we have had probably I'm just going to say 25 communications from the public on this issue. It's been in the paper numerous times, and many, all of our meetings are noticed. Too. So I think there was plenty of public input on this at this time, but how do you capture all that over a period of four years? Uh, I was at every building use committee meeting except for, I think I may have missed one where just one Dan and, in Mexico uh, and Bill uh, ran the meeting. And I've been on the building use committee for five years. And the only public that's come to any of our meetings which are properly noticed are those who have communications and, and want to come. So it's an open meeting. The public's well aware of it. This, what we're doing, Alderman Perez, is going in steps to get this done to a certain point. Obviously, when it comes down to the actual design phase, the council, through its processes that are put to, in the city, are going to have to go out for RFPs, uh, choose the person who's going to do the design of the building and at that time that's when the costs will be known but you have to have a site before you can do the design before you can actually be sure what your costs are going to be anything in this study can only be an estimate based on uh, national statistics dealing with square feet and construction costs and and like facilities being police buildings like you would for an office building typically you know an office building is x number of dollars per square feet on the average where a police facility is this many dollars per square foot on the average across the country. So those are things the council is going to have to deal with the financing of this as it comes. And, and you know, if we, if we started six months sooner or if it's six months later, that's a decision the council is going to have to make. We are not suggesting in any way, shape, or form what the cost of this building is going to be or at the financing step. That's something the council is going to have to decide. It's our job to recommend a site go through the design prof process and say to the council, this is what it's going to cost when it's done. And the council is going to make all those decisions. So I do share your concerns to a point, but I think that over a period of four years, there's been plenty of public input. And I actually have one from Glenn, Pil Glenn Pilling here that uh, the committee looked at twice. And, uh, and actually, I think that might be his third one we've looked at over the years. So plenty of input. If I may, Mr. Chairman, just finish. I, and, and I guess the other concern that I have, and that'll sum it up here for me, uh, is that I, I'm in the process right now of talking to, this happens to be my district too, by the way, and I'm in the process of talking to citizens. The first thing I hear is nobody said anything to me yet. And uh, we're prepared to, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm the first one to, to note that we need a, a police station, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, I believe in, a, in following it particular process to, to get to where we're at, and everybody has a different opinion on that, but we're at a point where we're proposing to take away green space, one of the first plotted parks in, in the entire city of Sheboygan, without even asking neighbors about it or what impact it's going to have on them, be it positive or negative, and that concerns me because, uh, as you know, being an alderman in that district, I want to get the blame for it. Nobody else is. Mm -hmm. you, know, you didn't stand up. You didn't stand up and speak for us. You didn't note our, our uh, concerns. Uh, I will say I've had about six calls, and they've always they've all been no. And the main concern there has been you're taking away the green space, and the reason we don't use it because you guys don't make it user friendly. Uh, we just happened to put in this year uh, several thousand dollars from the community development block grant program in which I serve and the advisory committee that we approved. And one of the reasons that we approved that amount of money was because the park wasn't being used. Or if it was being used, it was supposedly being used by the wrong people. Well, you put the right thing in there and the right people come. So they're, they're concerned about that. And the, and the second concern that they have is what's it going to do with the parking uh, situation there. So I'd like to avoid those concerns to the council. Let's consider. Thank you. As far as public input, WHBL ran a survey all week long. You could uh, 
with your computers in telephone, and 63% of that wanted Sheridan Park. Alderperson, sir. I just would like to, if I could before Bonnie, just respond to the parking issue at the park. That is taken care of in the study. There's, uh, there's uh, based on the number of people who visit a police facility, there's on-site parking for them. And on the Sheridan site park in particular, most of the staff, if not all of it, is underground. So there won't be an additional parking issue in the area. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess I just had both my questions answered. My first one being was um, adequate parking, which has been a concern. I've gotten calls on that. If you could just clarify what you did. And then second is if some of the neighbors have been pulled, and I've seen the survey with WHBL, and I feel that, that we've had enough response as far as the public, but I was just curious with the aldermen in that district. Thank you. Manny. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The uh, question I have is the possible impact on the future of shared services if we would go with the Sheridan Park site versus the 23rd Street sites. Yeah. Can I speak to that? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I don't see it as, a, as a, a negative impact on the future of shared services. In fact, I just received this weekend, I was out of town, but I picked up my papers yesterday, uh, the RFP that's going to be coming back to building use to look at, and on that RFP, is included uh, looking at a joint dispatch center inside the new police facility. Uh, I made it clear, I think, to the county board that just because we're moving to this site instead of the other one in a letter that I sent to them, that, that that does not mean there's not opportunities for shared services. First, you don't have to always be in the same building. We share an awful lot of services with the county. And actually, there's one here that's got uh, the 800 megahertz radio system, mobile data system, law enforcement software, city, county, fiber link, eastern shores, library, purchasing, E91 dispatch, multi-jurisdictional enforcement group, and so forth. And in this building, as I say in that RFP, we're looking at that part already. Uh, should there be a firing range issue, the county needs to replace its firing range. I think they've made that clear. And that's something that we could put in here. And there's another option being discussed about it being at a local uh, Learning Center also that uh, the mayor mentioned and shared services are going to continue and they're going to increase over time. The city is looking at a new police station for its police department. We're not looking uh, to keep uh, shared services away from the direction we're going in or anything like that, but we need a new police station and uh, shared services will continue to be addressed. There's this whole booklet that comes out of the City County Shared Services Committee sits here and we share a lot of services, a lot of things I think the public doesn't realize that we do share now and we'll continue to do that. It's the right thing to do for taxpayers and we'll do all we can. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Alderman Warner, um, I believe you were quoted in the, in the press last week for one article mentioning that if this didn't get approved, you had two other, two other sites that are or two other areas where you thought possible, the possibility of the police station could be built, no? We are down to two possibilities. Uh, as far as the Building Use Committee is concerned, and that's Sheridan Park. Oh, this and, might have been you personally. And the other one we're keeping open is, is obviously the county site. We haven't closed the door on that yet. Okay. Uh, con contrary to what's been out there, that hasn't happened. And we asked the county that they still consider to keep the, their terms in place because this council has not made its decision. The two sites I was talking about is possible replacement of green space. And until I have enough time to look into that a little further, I'd like not to re reveal them. One is about uh, one, two blocks away, and the other one is one, two, three, about four blocks away. Okay. And then in that same vein, on the call-in show that um, uh, Alderman Berg referred to on, I believe it was Friday, um, there were several people that called in and um, mentioned, one called in and mentioned something about 25 years ago or whenever the law enforcement center was built. At that particular time, the, the approach that was given to the city or the um, idea that was given to the city at that time was something about building a third floor on top of the law enforcement building and having our police station there. And then that way we'd all be in one, one area. It would be the downtown. And there were two other suggestions that were called in. One was um, the armory, but that's been talked about several times. And the other one was um, 
just came today, I believe it was, something about the, the Rice Coal Building being used for all other offices in City Hall and just leaving mm -hmm. the police station and their necessary facilities here in this building. And we um, will, will answers to, to why or why not those are feasible or not feasible be given at some point to the people calling in or, or, or something, or, and even to the aldermen who may not have been here during 2002 when this initial study was given. Thank you, Alderman McGraw, because that is a big issue. You know, for a lot of us that have been here doing this, we know all these things and we kind of sometimes expect other people to know them. I'd like to be able to address that. The main sites that have come up, I think we should probably provide the reasons for it, but I can assure you we did look at the Rice Building, a couple of issues that were involved there for a police station. No, not there for the police. The or, police for or for City Hall, or for City Hall, was that there really was no benefit uh, to, to move. This building here is designed in 1929 or 19, whatever it was, putting a police station with a few people downstairs and a hallway that went all the way through this building. I used to deliver papers. You come in one door from the press, you go out the other door, and I delivered right over there. If Alderman Perez had been living there at the time, I'd have been delivering to his house. But at that time, it worked fine for the police station to be downstairs. It was a smaller department. Uh, the city was different, crime was different, all that. But in order to turn this into a functional facility, this is an office building. Two stories, you can handle it with a police station if you have underground parking. One story, one story you can design a decent building, but you need four acres or as close to four acres as you can possibly get without crunching yourself. And that's from professionals in the field that we paid $38,000 for, close to $38,000 to find out. These people know what they're talking about. But yes, we did look at the Rice Building. The mechanicals in the building are terrible. The functional layout that they did look at just doesn't coagulate for even City Hall work. The floors are too small that are down below. Uh, for the public access and things like that, it just was not a good thing. But we could put something together that really addresses those. I'm sure we have it in here or in notes and minutes. And uh, the armory, there's another issue. Like the Rice Building, the Rice Building is sitting on probably the most valuable piece of property in the state. I would be willing to say probably the most valuable piece of property at this time in the state of Wisconsin. We're darn close in the top five or ten. Do we want to put a city office building into something that could become tax base, inside tax base, infrastructure tax base, inside the city limits of the city of Sheboygan? That's what we're talking about. We have such a difficult time in moving out our boundaries. We're, we have the lake on one side, I-43 on the other, and problems with the towns to the north and south. That would be a very uh, difficult choice for me personally to make, but I, we did look at it and we considered all those sites. We considered the site across the street, but it was way too small even where the little triangular areas between Kepsel and uh, Dave's who was in in that area over in there. Uh, but if you have particular sites you would like to know why they were turned down and want me to write something up that the public could see somewhere, I'd be glad to do that for you. If you want to write down those sites that you have those concerns with. Okay. The other, um, you, you mentioned a study. Um, is that the study that you have up there? And was that something that only building use received? In, um, or there, there were uh, some copies throughout the city at the time, and I don't really, I'd have to actually defer to Bob, uh, Deputy Chief Weiss, on how many we had and how many got out there. But what we could do is take the executive summary from here and some other parts of here and provide those to the council, and that is actually something I have written in notes at home, but not enough time. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I believe there was uh, initially a half dozen or so made. However, if you want to complete copy of that uh, just let me know and I'll see that you get one prior to the 19th you can look at it and see uh, if you got other questions uh, it's it's rather involved it does uh, include the site analysis for the uh, sites that Alderman were already referred to and then it uh, it refers in the second half uh, as to uh, the, the needs of uh, City Hall uh, this building so uh, it's it's in-depth and it's, uh, I would urge you to uh, get a copy of it. I would like one. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. We could, and maybe instead of copying every single page, if we took out the summaries and the basics on each one, well, that probably is the whole thing. There's a lot of paper here, folks. A lot of paper, just so we know the cost. Alderman Van Der Wiele. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was just wondering if we could emphasize for a minute or remind us about 
Uh, the cost savings between the county and Sheridan Park. How, what's the difference between the costs? I I didn't uh, put anything exactly together on that. I'd be glad to get that to you, but I think that if I go back somewhere in my notes, I can get somewhat close. And some of this is is probably up for debate. Uh, I had something prepared for our last building use meeting, and on that basis, the cost for and this is just site acquisition now, okay? Site acquisition and what we know about any additional costs. In order to build a functional facility, that was always our goal in this in looking at the size of the land. I know the press had its belief that we could live without two tenths of an acre in. Our consultant had its belief that on a flat site that which you could not go up on and things like that, that you had to have full four. But, the terms that we came to with the county, and Adam Payne is here, and he can correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, uh, is that the city would pay the county $300,250 in cash and give them the seventh and pen site for use for 100 years, which is valued at $326,000. And you have to remember, if we do that, we can't sell it to anyone who might be interested. And you have to also remember where that site is where it's located, 7th and Penn. It would also include what in numerous building use meetings was stated as an additional $250,000 in additional building costs due to the need for a floating slab. And I mentioned that before, the poor soil conditions that are stated in this document and actually what we had done is the phase one environmental on the Imperial Motel site and a phase one environmental and site analysis on the 23rd Street site. So the documentation is there that there are problems. Could we work around them? If we have to, we will work around anything. In, in, in addition to that, I picked a figure out of the air just based on things we had talked about and said $50,000. That would be need, needed for communication needs. And on the way to that meeting that day, Deputy Chief Weiss came out and said he had talked to Rush Schreiner and he finally got back to him with some figures and it was $50,000. So from the city's point of view, when you look at this, you're talking about $926,250 that you are in effect impacting city taxpayers by going to that site. Is that all bad? Maybe not. Some people think not. Some people think it is. I happen to believe that uh, as an alternate, we would have to work on that. Uh, but as you know, the building, I support the Building Use Committee's recommendation at this point. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as we've learned, choosing a site, uh, those sites don't live in a vacuum necessarily. It's not just ge geography and the piece of land itself, the size of the piece of land. There's also the cost, as, as Alderman Warner just discussed, of each site. Um, I've gone on record saying that I, I don't think the deal with the county is a very good one for the Sheboygan taxpayers, having given up a piece of prime real estate here uh, that we could invest in and put money into. Paying cash when I think we already pay our fair share for sheriff services, you know, in contrast to what we, we get from that. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I, at this point I'm supportive of the Sheridan Park because of those costs, savings that we have. Um, but as we discussed in public protection and safety, my concern is that at this point, we, 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 as Alderman Perez says, we have the park. Um, we can choose that we can do this uh, Sheridan Park site, um, but I'd really like to see as part of a cost that we're ignoring right now, the cost of replacing that green space, that park space for those neighbors as well, as an additional cost to building on the Sheridan Park School. I think that's a more fair comparison between uh, we're, the money we're saving by not giving to the county on, on the north side site I think we also have to look at what are we spending to replace that park down there, because I do think those neighbors deserve uh, another spot. Uh, right there, we do have a park across the street, uh, a school uh, area that we could use, but are there other sites that we can acquire and turn into a park? I think building a park requires a less strict piece of property than a police station does, which we have certain guidelines that we have to follow. Um, so I think before we really take a vote on, on proceeding with this site over other sites, we need to look at the cost, the full cost, which includes replacing that green space for those neighbors. And, and I think that's a uh, valid consideration, something that we'll have to look at when it comes to that point, but we are a few weeks off yet, and, and we can look at that. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My apology for coming late. I was unavoidably detained. But, uh, you know, as Charles Dickens wrote in his book, A Christmas Carol, he said, unless you understand Marley's dead, this story won't make any sense. Well, unless you understand that the police department is broken, there's no way to fix it, this whole thing doesn't make any sense. And believe me, it's broke, and there's no way to fix it. We, as a committee, looked at somewhere around 40 different projects. And you have to understand that a police station is not an office building with cops in it. It's an extremely uh, specialized sort of a building that has very special, specific security needs, which we don't have here. Right now, our department is a disaster waiting to happen. If something happens down there, the city is totally liable because they already know that this thing is a disaster waiting to happen. Because we're mixing uh, criminals or people that have been arrested, we're mixing them with the general public, and it happens every single day down there. And if something happens, we're gonna be liable because we know this exists. And we looked at a lot of different places. We hired Kimmy and Associates for one good reason, because Kimmy and Associates builds police stations. They build nothing else, they work with police stations. If we wanted an architectural firm that built supermarkets, we could have hired one. They're all over the place. But we needed specialists. We paid them $36,000. They did a very, very thorough study. And if you recall, at one point, the Chamber of Commerce brought up the fact that why don't we build onto the courthouse? And we contacted the architects and they said, well, they would be happy to survey the courthouse, but it would cost another $10,000, which the Chamber paid. And they did a survey and they came back with the startling realization that the Sheriff's Department right now is too small. The thought has been brought up, why do we have to build so big? Why are we trying to build the Taj Mahal, it's even been called? Well, it's a little bit like taking a six-year-old into a shoe store and buying them a pair of shoes that fit exactly because in three months they're not going to fit. Our, our experts told us that the city of Sheboygan grows between one and one and a half percent a year, which is a very minimal growth. And they said, plan 20 years down the road, unless you guys want to build another one in about 10 or so years. Otherwise, we're going to end up with the same thing the sheriff has got now. Again, a new, rather new facility, but one that's dysfunctional. They, they went to the uh, Rice Building, they took a look at it, they said, forget it. It's just too, dis you can't take this building and remodel it into a functional police station. Uh, thoughts have been brought up about the armory. Well, the armory is totally out of the picture because it would be almost impossible to make a, a functional police station out of the armory. As I said again, this is not just a building where cops sit around. This is a functional police station that has definite needs. And this is why we voted to go with Kimmy and Associates because we paid them a lot of money to ask their questions. When you go to a doctor and ask him what's wrong with you and he tells you you've got heart problem, you don't say, no, I don't have heart problem, I got a lung problem. We hired an we hired a expert. He told us what to do. And I think we would be uh, remiss in our duty if we didn't do what he was telling us what to do. Otherwise, why did we hire him? If we were gonna make a decision on our own, we could have done that. They looked at places on Erie Avenue, they looked at places uh, we were offered the old box factory up on 17th Street. All of these things were looked at. We've been at this for, 40, for three months, or three years. Uh, we probably checked over 40 some sites. Somebody asked me today, why are you guys rushing into this? I said, well, I don't think a three year investigation is exactly rushing into it. But uh, this is one of the main reasons that uh, our committee picked Kimmy and Associates. And the people have to understand that a police department is a very, very specialized place and uh, it takes experts to design it. It's not just an office building, it's a lot more. Thank you. Okay, I'll take two more here. Bonnie, Serda. This is just some food for thought. Um, I actually grew up as a child in that area. I grew up right across the street from Sheridan School. And personally, I'll tell you this, parents much preferred their children playing at Sheridan School. And that's one because Parents could see their children. We had issues back then with, there was a lot more trees then. Um, children weren't safe there. It was somewhat isolated. And then you also had the issue of them crossing 14th Street. As a child, I never felt that I didn't have enough at Sheridan School. If you actually look, the equipment, 
I mean, it's the same if not more at the school. So our needs were always met as a child playing across at Sheridan School versus the park. And I also have fond memories. We used to walk down, if you would take, let's here's for all argument's sake, if you would take away the park, kids won't have a place to go picnic and such. Our family would often walk down to Qantas Park. We would go sledding there. We also utilize Muth Park too. So that was all within walking distance. But let me be on record, and I understand that we're all taking a look at the numbers, but I'll, I'll honestly, myself personally, that money, if it, if it was just a little bit more to, to make that police station at Sheridan Park, I would be willing to put my money there. I'm stepping out in faith thinking, I've, I've seen the trends in development in the city of Sheboygan. I've, for, for how long I've seen development move on the north side, it's about time that we see things move to the south side. I think it's, it's, a, it's a very high compliment that it's being considered Sheridan Park. I think what, would, what we would be giving up is something that is worth its weight in gold by putting that police station there. I think it would be a win-win situation for the neighborhood itself and all the city of Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I appreciate all the information we're receiving this evening. And uh, I think we councilmen, councilmen, councilwomen, us folk, us city fathers, should have all the information we possibly can, we definitely will rely on the professional study, the Kindy and Associates, because they certainly do know what they're doing. But I think to serve our constituents best, we should be able to answer their questions rather than just say, well, the professional said so. That doesn't go over real well with individuals. So if we know the reasoning behind it, so perhaps some of those that um, summary pages that you were talking about, Alderman Warner, mm -hmm. it would be good for all of us to know that information and be able to tell our constituents the reasoning other than just, they said so. Thank you. And uh, I'll, I'll work with Deputy Chief Weiss on looking at those issues and uh, we're both on vacation this week, but we may not be on vacation all week, I guess. So we'll get something together. So the sole purpose right now is to, for the committee to hold here to take a vote, yes or no, that we, that as a committee to hold, can pass this on to the city planning. And then they will make their decision. So what our vote tonight is going to be is to pass it, I or no, and pass it on to the city planning. So, oh. yeah, Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, refer the document to the city planning commission for their comments. Pardon? I move that we refer the document to the city planning commission for their comments. After our vote. Yep. I didn't even get the vote. He wants to move. Part. He he motion and second, yeah. To pass Set, it on to city on planning. The after. Plan. Right. Now Which, you're to move it on from after our vote here to go into city planning. That's correct. Okay. Point of order. Um, we don't have a document here. The document is coming into council. So really I don't think we need to take a vote tonight on here at the committee of the whole, we're going to be asked that same question. Or the mayor will just refer that document to the um, plan commission when that comes in. I don't believe we have to make a vote tonight to send it to the plan commission because we don't actually have a document. Actually, I think that is correct. Right. Well, we could at least can't we send what our recommendation is. Board conference. Attorney McLean. I guess I believe the statute is there for a purpose. It, it, decisions like this are to be referred to the City Plan Commission for recommendation, report and recommendation back to the council. Uh, I think the council should have that input from the Plan Commission before making a decision. Uh, so that you're not tainting the plan commission. Okay. In other words, if you're saying, you know, 15 or 
14, however many aldermen are here, think uh, it ought to be here, you know, what's, then Planning Commission says, you know, what's their function? Their function should be to provide the council with input for the council to make an informed decision. And I, so I would suggest that you do it in that order, Mr. Chairman, that the matter uh, be uh, reported on by the Planning Commission. Uh, if the Planning Commission, you know, they very well might make their determination, the meeting, which would be, I guess, a week from today, and, and that report could um, come back to council on July 19th. Now, that's not saying that they have to act that fast. They can uh, decide what to do once they've got it. But, you know, they're really set up statutorily to make that recommendation and to give that advice to the council before the council makes the decision. Okay, thank you. Okay, then we have a agenda. The, the agenda is what dictates our meetings, the proceedings of our meetings, and item number five says refer to city council. I don't know what we're referring, but whatever we are, we're going to refer to city council. We don't refer to city plan. The council will do that tonight. I believe it's on our agenda for tonight to refer that uh, to city planning. But for us to go off up, uh, away from the agenda is, is not correct, and I won't even say it's illegal. All right. There has been a motion and a second. To oh, actually, actually, got to rescind them. Yeah, we don't want to pat. We don't want to vote on anything. We just want to let that. We have the discussion now. We want to move on to the Patriot Act. Okay. Yeah. So there will not be no action taken. Right. So that takes care of that part. Now, is Mr. Richards here? Could you please come up and explain with this Patriot Act, please, for us, so we can we can send document 1-1, 10405. Or you can go right, you can go right there. the old point that if you want to get somewhere it's good to know where you're going uh, <laughs> and I didn't I I do have some copies of the uh, resolution that was passed in Milwaukee on March 2nd and I believe whoever gets it the city clerk uh, there are enough for all of the council members I believe Could you pass me? I just want to say in preliminary uh, I'm very I'm very pleased and proud to be back in Sheboygan. I grew up here. I have a whole list of firsts that happened here for me. Uh, I um, went to my first professional baseball game. And some of you would remember that was the Sheboygan Indians. And uh, I went to my first circus here, which was Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey, which came here one day. I rode my first escalator, and I, I think I rode my first elevator here. And you all know what building that would be in because in the 1940s, it was just H.C. Prangy Company, right? Okay. And um, I also, um, I guess I also ex took my first Greyhound bus ride in Chicago Northwestern. My first train ride came. So I did a lot of firsts here. I also went to my first uh, uh, witness, my first uh, um, uh, major labor strike, and that was the Kohler Company. Uh, am, I, am I speaking directly enough? Sure. Okay, good. Um, so I have a lot of, uh, and I never set foot in the city, in the city hall. Uh, I know I never did. Uh, and um, in fact, just today I had to kind of look it up to be sure that I knew where it was. I vaguely was aware. Uh, anyway, my dad worked at Electric Spray Company. How many remember that one? It is, I don't think it's here anymore. He also worked at Kohler Company, uh, and uh, uh, he left Sheboygan 
before I was born and after, during the first strike, so that would, you, some of you know when that was. Um, anyway, my connections to Sheboygan, if somebody asked me where did you grow up, I grew up mostly on farms in Sheboygan County, but I just say Sheboygan. And, and uh, sitting here tonight uh, as a council member in Milwaukee, and I <clears throat> just retired after 16 years on the Milwaukee Common Council, and so we serve four-year terms there, so you all know what that means. You have to run for re-election and you have to be accountable. And, and just listening uh, uh, to Mayor Schramm and, and, and uh, uh, City Attorney McLean, uh, explaining the, uh, particularly talking about the police station and the, the siting of the property or finding the property, siting it, and the amount of money that's going to be spent for it. And I was paging through and I saw little things I, uh, which are big things, money for a snowblower, mower, uh, a wastewater treatment plant, pump station, getting a control panel. Uh, that's the kind of thing that I'm used to. We, we do a lot of that in Milwaukee. Uh, talking about the boardwalk, which is beautiful. It was never there when I was a kid here. What you've done to your lakefront is beautiful. Uh, you're going to have the sailboat championships. I just saw that. Uh, you're also going to have a U.S. major golf tournament at Whistling Straits. And I know that's going to cost Sheboygan some money, but there's gives and takes, and, and my God, you're going to be in the, in, right in the head of, for six days, it's going to be uh, the only, anyway. I'm just so proud to be here and to see this is local government operating, and I'm not trying to schmooze you, it simply is. Uh, I've, I'm glad to see some young people sitting out here in the audience. Uh, I'm always glad when I see them in, I saw them in Milwaukee, because I always thought, well, those are the people that are going to be paying for my Social Security. And, and God bless them, and I'm collecting Social Security now. And I love young people, especially young people with jobs and, and, uh, and young people interested in government. Um, <clears throat> I saw the one about the car backed into a police vehicle. And whoever the alderman is for that, heard about that. I know how that works. And you've got you've to defend the right. You've got to defend the city. You can't just have frivolous lawsuits but you've got to have justice done. And that's what aldermen do, and that's what I did for 16 years. There's also other issues that come up, and the issue of the U.S. Patriot Act, I'm really, uh, really happy that uh, you've decided to take that on. Uh, Alderman Dennis Bauman, by a show of hands, hi. I just wondered who that was. Uh, you know, I'm sure, and I've never met him, you can test that, but I'm sure that some people would say, well, what are you doing that for? Uh, that's, not, that's no business of local government. And, and, and yet, uh, and still, it is the business of local government. As, uh, as you can see, uh, and I know you've gotten literature, that I guess it's the Sheboygan, Sheboygan peacemakers, peace seekers, have uh, kind of lobbied you for this uh, and gotten this issue before you. And, and you've seen, and as you'll see if you page through uh, the resolution that I have, uh, that I introduced with my colleagues, uh, that these kinds of resolutions don't come free. And the U.S. Patriot Act comes at a cost to local government. It was passed, you all know the history of it, I would be glad to talk about that. I don't know any more about it, I think, than probably anybody else. But the U.S. Patriot Act was p passed in a hurry uh, with very little dissent. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, Senator Feingold voted against it. Uh, but the, you're, you're a senator. Uh, but the effect of the U.S. Patriot Act would be to take your police force. You're going to build a, you're gonna build a new police station, one, and I understand. I kind of was convinced by the alderman who said, you know, you, police facilities are not just like something that you can have in connection with, uh, you know, some other facility. And you all understand that. So your police force here in Sheboygan, which is supposed to be doing the work that police forces have to do, and it's very minute in detail, all of a sudden they would be enforcing the U.S. Patriot Act, which is wide-ranging and, and I'm not an authority on it. Uh, you've gotten documents and you can refer to it. But the, the fact is that they would be taken away from the work that you give them to do, that you want to do for your citizens in Sheboygan, and, and, and enforcing the U.S. Patriot Act. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it certainly is a thing that concerns local government. That's my point. 
My point is that this is a valid and a worthy topic for you, uh, and I applaud you for, uh, um, for uh, taking it on. Uh, in the further, last further resolve, it says, the city of Milwaukee joins 43 million Americans, 250 communities in 37 states uh, as of February 24th. I know that it's 330 communities, or 333 communities have passed resolutions so far, and, and the other numbers have gone up. Local communities have decided that this is an important issue for them to take on. Uh, I, um, I applaud you, and I, um, I think that, uh, like the National League of Cities, uh, and I'm sure that Sheboygan is a member of the National League of Cities, as well as the, National, uh, the Wisconsin League of Municipalities, uh, have expressed concerns that the way the uh, uh, um, U.S. Patriot Act was constructed threatens civil rights and civil liberties that are guaranteed in the U.S. Constitution. And yes, I defend your right and my right as an elected official, former elected official for me, to be responsive to your citizens, even if some of your citizens don't don't consider this uh, uh, issue of their civil liberties, that you as an elected official have a right to point that out, a right to explore that, and then to have uh, uh, the decision-making power on this local, local level that uh, Thomas Jefferson and everybody else, somebody gave me this button, dissent is patriotism, or dissent is patriotic. We just yesterday, day before, 4th of July, we celebrated dissent in this country. The 4th of July is about dissent. They dissented against the government they had, and they got a new kind of government. And the US Patriot Act takes away, and it gives the power for the government that's in sitting to take away your ability to dissent and your ability to protest. You and I, as the local officials, uh, it isn't anybody else. We were elected to say on the strong feelings myself about the problems I have with the U.S. Patriot Act, uh, the amount, not only the amount that it costs in terms of, uh, it will cost in terms of uh, an unfunded mandate to local police and so on, uh, and governments to provide, uh, to, to comply with the U.S. Patriot Act, to libraries to provide information. Your wonderful public library here will, will also be affected by that. But it also has ramifications for the whole country. And yes, and, and, and I'll ask for questions if you want to have them. Uh, yes, it is important that we, we as local officials, take the all aspects of our government and all aspects of our governing seriously and personally because in no place else does the government reside except in the local of the local uh, uh, citizens of the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody got any questions? No. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, motion was made to second to adjourn. We need a, why don't we make a motion to file and, and draw up a resolution that uh, the council could consider that's that new. Alderman Mr. Chairperson, uh, let's, uh, I would like to then make the motion to accept and file document 11, communication 010405, draw up a document uh, similar to the uh, city of Milwaukee's uh, resolution. The motion was made and seconded to file and have the city attorney draw up a document similar to the one we received tonight. So that would come back to council. Yeah, and come back to council.
Do we? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Contrary? Okay, carried. Move to adjourn. Motion was made to second and or second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye.